What is going on guys? Okay, so today we're going to be making this thing. This is a compressed air cannon, great for special effects. Uses an air tank and an ejection mortar. Fill this up with air, goes up to 8 bar. And fill this up with whatever you want, confetti, blood, anything works. And when you're ready to shoot, pull the valve and out goes the projectile, so let's get started. So I'm going to use an empty bottle of Argon CO2 that I used for MIG welding as the air tank and an empty bottle of oxygen from my brazing torch as the ejection mortar. I started out by carefully drilling a small hole in the bottle to make sure the bottle was indeed empty. Using the miter saw, I cut off the tip of the bottle, creating a nice mortar. Next, I unscrewed the nozzle from the CO2 bottle. Using a wire wheel brush and a power drill, I removed the paint from the bottles and gave them a bit of a polish. After a quick trip to the hardware store, I gathered all the materials needed to complete the air cannon. And here they are. Now I ended up not using this pressure gauge, and you'll see why in just a second. These quarter turn valves use a stainless steel ball to act as a seal. These are nice because they are relatively inexpensive and work great at high pressures. I started off by drilling a hole through the end cap fittings. To create a perfect airtight connection between the tank and the tubing, I'll be adding these rubber o-rings. Now let's get brazing! The fitting I'm about to braze onto the air tank is made of brass and the tank is made of steel. To correctly braze these two metals together, I used rods containing 40% silver. This is essential, as common brazing rods for copper tubing typically only use 6% silver and other metals. These alloys simply don't offer enough strength for metals other than copper. After applying solder flux between the fitting and the tank, and after heating up the metals with the torch, the metals should start glowing red. At this point, I could add a dab of silver alloy. So there's no need to dab it all around. Uh, if the metals get hot enough, the silver should take on its own. Where the heat goes, the silver flows. The same thing is done for the ejection mortar, again using 40% silver rods. A higher concentration of silver would have made a stronger joint, but obviously if you start adding more silver, the rods get a bit expensive. I wanted to be able to toggle between a small and a larger ejection mortar. So I brazed a fitting to a small piece of steel tubing as the smaller mortar. Next, I tried brazing the pressure gauge directly to a piece of copper tubing, as I couldn't find a fitting with a matching thread diameter. I thought that if I removed the plastic casing, I could get away with it, but it ended up not going quite as smoothly as I had anticipated. So I ended up just not using the pressure gauge at all. Using the miter saw, I cut all the tubing, add a piece of flat steel bar to the right length. Once I was happy with the tubing layout, I could start brazing the tubes to the fittings. This time I am using classic 6% silver brazing rods, since in this case, this is more than strong enough as we're brazing, you know, copper to copper. I MIG welded the piece of steel bar to the air tank. This will act as support for the tubing and provide extra rigidity. Using 40% silver rod, I brazed the copper tubing to the steel bar. Once that was done, the o-rings are placed in the fittings and the quarter turn valves are screwed on tight. And we're done! Using a standard quick connect fitting, I filled up the air tank with compressed air. My particular compressor only goes up to 8 bar or 116 psi. A quick stress test in SOLIDWORKS shows that in theory, at least 500 psi is required to plastically deform the copper tubing, and 1000 psi is required to plastically deform the steel tank. A lot more is required to create a rupture, so 116 psi should be very safe. And by the way, if you're interested in learning SOLIDWORKS, the sponsor of this video is just the place for you. Skillshare is an online learning platform. There are over 22,000 courses to choose from, including courses on 3D surface modeling and design in SOLIDWORKS. And if you're just getting started in computer-assisted design, there are dozens of training courses for free software, such as SketchUp or FreeCAD. By signing up now, you get completely free access to every single course on Skillshare for two months. To sign up, check out the links in the video description. And we're back shooting yet another video with FXSP. So a very cool trick you can do with an air cannon is to create the old blood splatter effect. All you need to do is to fill the cannon with fake blood and to have someone hidden out of frame pointing the cannon to a wall. Then on cue, the cannon is fired behind the actor's head, creating a nice gory splatter. Now let's test it with a bunch of different projectiles. So let's start with some fluorescent goo and the larger ejection mortar. Three, two, one. 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 
Next, let's try it out with some effects powder. <laughs> Next, fake blood inside the smaller mortar. And finally, a rather interesting mix of polyethylene oxide, flour, and water. And there you have it. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like. Definitely subscribe for more videos just like this one. And I shall see you guys next time.